Hello and good day everyone. We are Group 4 and we are going to present our report regarding development, exploitation and protection of fisheries resources in disputed waters in sub-China Sea. Our team members includes me, Nadra Husnina Binti Hashim, 252587, Siti Mariam Binti Sa'ad, 257176, Lee Donny, 262916, Nurul Ashikin Binti Abidin, 265676, and Pavina Pramwichit, 265766. Before we start, let's take a look at the table of content for today. So there will be five parts in this presentation and each part will be presented by each of us. I am going to present the first part which is introduction and will be followed by my colleagues who will present the second, third, fourth and fifth part and we will conclude with the conclusion by me again. So let's look at the first part for today. The first part is introduction which includes introduction of South China Sea problem statement, research questions, and also research objectives. Okay, let me start with the introduction to South China Sea, the main location of our topic for today. First of all, the South China Sea is a semi-enclosed sea located in the Southeast Asia. This means the region covers Southeast Asian countries such as Malaysia, Vietnam, the Philippines, and leading to East Asian countries such as China, Korea, and Japan. It is a marginal sea that connects two oceans, the Andaman Sea, Hindi Ocean, and the Pacific Sea. It is one of the busiest maritime routes for centuries, with one-third of global shipping passes through the water. Aside from being a key navigational pathway, Sub-China Sea is also diverse and rich in marine resources and ecosystem. This rich amount of resources lead to interstate conflict of littoral states claiming sovereignty over the region in order to maximize maritime control. The basis of the claimant states varies. For example, China based their claim on the 9-dash line that represent in an old map of China's territory. Due to this claim, littoral states over the region were involved in a maritime territorial dispute. Recently, China had made some assertive actions such as reclamation in disputed features, constructing military and industrial outposts on artificial islands that sparked displeasure among claimant states. So, the dispute served as a factor that led to our main issue in the South China Sea, which is the fisheries resources in the region. Our problem statement revolves the consequences from this long-standing territorial conflict between the claimant states in the South China Sea have affected the conservation efforts of marine resources in the disputing area. Some examples of marine issues that affected the fish resources are illegal fishing, destructive fishing technique, and also land reclamation. Next will be our research questions, the questions that existed as the main drive of our report. There are four research questions that we aim to answer. The first one is, what are the, fish, what are the profiles of marine fisheries in disputed areas of sub-China Sea? Second, what are the international legal regimes that can be applicable in governing marine fisheries in the sub-China Sea? The third one is, what are the issues and challenges of sustainable fisheries management and conservation in the disputed areas of South China Sea? And the last one is, what are the management measures for the protections and conservation marine fisheries in disputed areas of South China Sea? After developing our research questions, we had developed a set of research objectives that will be answered in the later part of this presentation by my team. The first objective is to describe marine captured fisheries profile in the disputed areas of South China Sea. The second one is to examine the international legal regime related to the protection and conservation of marine fisheries in South China Sea. 
The third one is we also aim to analyze the issues and challenges relating to the management and conservation of fisheries resources of the South China Sea dispute. And the last one is we want to propose the management measures for the protection and conservation of marine fisheries in disputed areas of South China Sea. Now, we already know the problem and the objectives to be achieved for this topic. Next, my colleague Lee Doni will further explain about marine fisheries profile in the South China Sea. Let's welcome her and thank you. Thank you, Nadira, for the briefing just now. Good day, everyone. Let me introduce myself. I am Lee Doni, your second presenter today. In following section, I will explain to you the Malaysia position in South China Sea dispute. Malaysia involved in the South China Sea dispute due to the Nine Dash Line Clan Machina, which is overlapping the Malaysia EEZ. Malaysia claims several features in South China Sea, particularly the southern part of Spratly Island, because it falls inside the border of Malaysia's continental shelf and EEZ. Malaysia owned the first five features in Spratly Island. However, Malaysia also claims other features in South China Sea too, such as the Amboina Cay, but it owned by Vietnam. Malaysia pulled out from claiming Luisa Reef, and it is now administrated by Brunei. Basically, Jim Shaw and Lukonia Shaw is administrating by Malaysia, but claimed by China. In the coming up section, I will explain to you the marine fishery profile in South China Sea. There are six significant fishing grounds among 250 islands in South China Sea, including Spratly Island, Scarborough Shoal, Mischief Reef, Parasol Island, Taiping Island, and Ditu Island. Secondly, the types of fishing gear using in South China Sea. There are several types of fishing gear being used in South China Sea. The common fishing gear used in South China Sea are trolling, purse signing, push netting, hook and line, and gill net. Furthermore, the catch landing rate in South China Sea. In 2012, the catch landing rate in South China Sea approximately 18 million US dollar, and it increased to 21.8 billion US dollar in 2015, which occupied 12 percent of the global catch. Unfortunately, in 2019, the South China Sea only contributes 10 percent of the world's fisheries, show a decline of catch landing rate in South China Sea. There are many marine species caught in South China Sea. The top six will be sardines, Indian mackerel, anchovy, rouseget, skipjack tuna, and yellow fins tuna. Next, let's look into the fishing parts in South China Sea. At present, it seems there are 172 fishing parts located in South China Sea. China accounts the most number of fishing ports, where there are 70 fishing ports, approximately 40% among the total number of fishing ports in South China Sea. Well, that's all from me. Thank you for your listening. My maid Mariam will brief you about the international legal and normative regime for fisheries conservation and protection. Thank you, Doni. Now, I will further the discussions on international legal and normative regime for fisheries conservation and protection. First, I will discuss about 1982 United Nations Convention on Law of the Sea and OSC. LOSC is the first general global convention that is specifically designed for marine protections. Under Article 117, extended to Article 118 and Article 119, it provides general measure on marine conservation and protections that need to be obeyed by the states when fishing at high seas, including South China Sea. 
Next, I will discuss about 1995 UN Fish Stocks Agreement. This agreement addressed problems that related to the management of high seas fisheries and mostly covers migratory fish stocks in high seas and areas that are under national jurisdiction. Under Part 3 of 1995 UN Fish Stocks Agreement, in Article 8 specifically address the cooperation for conservation and management concerning straddling fish stocks and highly migratory fish stocks. So, this agreement is relevant for South China Sea issues as it reached with migratory fish stocks. Another legal instrument that used in South China Sea issues is 2009 Agreement on Port States Measures to Prevent, Deter and Eliminate Illegal, Unreported and Unregulated Fishing. This agreement, also known as PSMA, is focused on IUU fishing activities. Under Article 2, stated that the objective of this agreement are to prevent, deter and eliminate IUU fishing completely. Although it seems impossible, the enforcement of this agreement shows positive impact in fisheries conservation and protection. Next, I will discuss about non-binding legal instrument, which is 1995 FAO Code of Conduct on Responsible Fishing. The aim of this Code of Conduct is to set international standards of behavior for responsible practice for all states to obey when fishing, whether in high seas or not. This Code of Conduct is relevant and addressed to all members and non-members of FAO. Last but not least, the discussion will be on 2001 IPOA-IUU Fishing. The IPOA-IUU Fishing is an elaborated discussion on the framework of the Code of Conduct for Responsible Fisheries. IPOA or International Plan of Action is a guide that can fully utilize a number of situations in combating IUU fishing. This plan of actions cover all states including fish state, port state, coastal state and market state. That's all from me. Next, my friend Pavina will discuss further about issues and challenges of marine fisheries in South China Sea. Hi, I'm Pavina. So today, in my part, I will explain about issues and challenges of marine fisheries in South China Sea. Researchers say sea life in South China Sea continue to suffer damage because of overfishing and a lack of international actions to protect the area. The first issue affecting sustainable marine safaris in South China Sea is foreign encroachments of illegal fishing. Illegal fishing activity could affect the threatened marine resources. So, what is overfishing? Overfishing is whereby a fisherman catches too many fish at one time. So the breeding of popular becomes too depleted to recover. Overfishing has eliminated 90% of the world large predatory fishes and is diversifying marine ecosystem. The second issue and challenges is destructive fishing practice namely bottom trawling, fish bombings, as well as fish aggregating device. In Japanese, we call it Muro-Ami. The first destructive fishing practice will be bottom trawling. Bottom trawling is one of the most diversity ways our oceans are being overfished, degraded, and biodiversity destroyed. Bottom trawling affects sea beds environment by dragging a 12 until 24 meter nets on the sea beds and suspending sediments. Next is fish bombing. Fish bombing can call it as dynamite fishing or blast fishing. Fish bombing is a deductive fishing practice in which typical homemade bombs are dropped into the oceans or onto the seabed. Shortwave produced by the explosions either stuns or kill the fish, some of which are then collected from the surface while the rest are sink into the seabed. Fish bombings not only target fish 
but all other surrounding marine life as well, as well as destroy the coral which takes many decades to recover. The third destructive fishing practice would be fish aggregating device, also known as Muro Ami, as well as FAD. FAD is a permanent, semi-permanent or temporary structures or device made from any materials to use and lure the fish. FAD, also known as the fish protections from the predator. The FAD phenomena was found to have unrecoverable negative impacts to coral as it destroyed the colonies of the coral polyps. FAD, surprisingly, Malaysia itself are using these fishing methods in the middle of 1994. The target species would be tuna fish, billfish, as well as dolphin. Moreover, the issues like degradations of marine fisheries habits from non-fishing activity, such as land reclamation activity, the impacts of land reclamation are divided to four aspects, namely biological impacts, who lost the marine beneath ecosystem, destructions of food chains as well as coastal water pollution. Second is social economy impacts, which affects the life foods and fisheries. Coastline change in the coastal area due to the reclamations will impact the local community area. The third one is physical impacts, which the saltwater instructions and alterations of groundwater system. Another effects like affects the qualities life of the nearby residents. The last issue of this chapter will be resource of pollution from vessel and ship. Namely, tanker accidents, most commonly associated with ship's pollution are oil split, iron from decks, garbage and other solid waste. Ballast water discharge from ships and ports as well as oily water discharge from the ships will affect the marine pollution as well. Not only that, the sound pollution caused by the ships and vessels that increased in recent history in South China Sea. That's all for my part. Next, my friend Shikins will explain further regarding the management measures for the protections and conservation of marine fisheries. Thank you. Thank you, Pavina. Hi, my name is Nurul Ashkin Abidin, 265676, and I will explain on my part regarding the management measure for the protection and conservation of marine fisheries in the South China Sea. Okay, the first one is Established Regional Marine Protection, or also called MPA. MPA can be defined as spaces or spaces that attempt to limit fishing activity and promote sustaining long-term resources management, such as marine park or marine sanctuaries. A no-take zone is an area set aside by the government where no extractive activity is allowed. Extractive activity is an action that remove or extract any resources. Extractive activity including fishing, hunting, logging, mining and drilling, shell collecting and archaeological digging are also extractive. Some good examples of marine protected areas such as Coral Triangle in Asia, Pacific Region and the Rose Region MPA in India, New Zealand and United States. Here are the Coral Triangle map and the Rose Region MPA map. Second, Impose Seasonal and Species-Based Fishing Moratorium. The second management approach that can be adopted by the claimant state to promote responsible and sustainable fishery sector in the disputed water of South China Sea is Impose Seasonal and Species-Based Fishing Moratorium. Ban will pays because of depleted fish stock and also marine resources. This is effort to preserve and recover the marine environment and help protecting young fish stock to grow. China has issued summer fishing moratorium since 1999 and it helped increase fish stock for 30%. 
said establish regional fishery database. Fishery database is a platform with data regarding fishery management like statistic, number of fish stock, type of fish and all more. The purpose to have fishery database is to ease the fishery management and other working sectors to analyze and refer to as for the commercial, recreational, cultural and scientific purpose. One of example of regional database is the application of utilize the fishery resources information system in first. This is a regional collaborative project with eight South and Southeast Asian countries namely Bangladesh, India, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Sri Lanka, Thailand and Vietnam. They introduced a regional database for scientific troll survey that's uh, referred to as troll base. This is an example of first database system. Then, create regional fishery management organization. A regional management organization or arrangement RFMO exists in the majority of high sea area that have major deep sea fisheries. They are usually tasked with collecting fishery statistics, assessing resources, making management decisions, and monitoring activities. RFMO play a role in facilitating intergovernmental cooperation in fishery management. With recently strengthened mandates, most RFMO now have the power to manage according to an ecosystem approach to fishery. Different regional high sea fisheries ground are governed by different RFMO. Here are some examples of RFMO such as EPFIC, Asia Pacific Fishery Commission, CCMLR, Commission for the Conservation of Antarctic Marine Living Resources. Next, centralized licensing for vessel, fishermen and gears. Fishing license is a type of document or legal document that was created to gain legal right, privilege and obligation of fisher. The license can be used to gain a wide variety of information related to fisheries activity in the area to which it applies. Standardized and centralized fishing license for vessel, fishermen and gear in suction and sea is one of all the measures that other claimant states should recommend as it had one pirate center to control all the information regarding license on fishing area of suction and sea. Lastly, the other measure to protect and conserve marine resources in such a sea is to prohibit activity of fish transfer at sea. Fish transfer can also be recognized as transshipment at sea. Activity of transferring fish supply from vessel to another vessel is legal according to the international law. But fishermen misuse the function of transshipment which results into illegal and reported and regretted IUU fishing. Mostly, illegal fish transport occur at high sea where it is difficult for maritime enforcement and port authority to track down. The example of illegal transshipment are in Ghana, whereby locals from Ghana call this activity a psycho, where they will carry frozen boxes of fish from the fishing vessel using small boats or canoe and sell it out at the market. I think that's all from me, and now I will pass the next part to Nadra. Thank you. Thank you Ashikin and my other members for the excellent detailed explanation about development, exploitation and conservation of fisheries resources in disputed areas of South China Sea. I would like to conclude our report and presentation for today. The fisheries resources in the South China Sea are being threatened by the territorial dispute that happened between littoral states. Plus, there had been some issues that happened in the South China Sea that affected these fisheries. Thus, all littoral states should improve their relationship and protect marine fisheries to ensure sustainability of the resources for the future generation. That's all from our team. Thank you for listening and we open for a Q&A session.